Welcome back to High Code. In this video, we are tackling an essential problem for coding interviews, maximum summary from lead code. We will explore three approaches, naive brute force approach, optimized brute force approach and cuttings algorithm. Let's break down the problem step by step and understand how this solution works. So sit back, relax and let's dive in. So problem statement is, given an integer array nums, find the subarray with the largest sum and return its sum. So what is subarray? A subarray is a contiguous non-empty sequence of elements within an array. So let's take this example guys. Uh, so if we have nums as A, B, C, D, what are the subarrays? It has all these subarrays. So one subarray should be A, B, C, D and then we have length 2, A, B, B, C, C, D and then length 3, A, B, C, B, C, D and length 4 is A, B, C, D. So what we can learn from this is an array can be subarray of itself, okay? So basically the subarray is like part of an array with contiguous elements. So, so like if you skip one element that would be a subsequence. It's not a subarray, okay? That is the difference between subarray and subsequence, okay? In the example one, they given us nums is this one. The output is 6 because the subarray 4 minus 1, 2, 1 has a larger sum 6. Apart from this, there is no subarray which has a larger sum, okay? That's why we output this 6. So in example 2, we have nums given as an array with single element. In that case, we can just return that element because we don't need to compute any sum here. And then the array is subarray of itself. So we can just return 1. In example 3, we have this array 5, 4, minus 1, 7, 8. Here the output is 23. Here we got this output considering all the elements in the subarray, okay? So basically they are just saying the three different cases we have. Okay, and then here in the constraints, we have nums length in the enclosure range of 1 to 10 power 5. What we can learn from this? We know that our system can perform only 10 power 8 operations per second. So if we perform more than that, it would be term limit exceeded. So here n is 10 power 5. I'm saying n as length of the nums, okay? So if we perform this with n operations or n log n operations, we can easily scale it. Okay, if we perform it greater than or equal to n square, then the solution can be accepted, okay? Because n square is what here 10 power 10, which is greater than 10 power 8. And then next constraint is nums of 5 is in the enclosure range of minus 10 power 4 to 10 power 4. So that is to say that uh, each element in the nums is in the enclosure range of minus 10 power 4 to 10 power 4, okay? So this is the boilerplate code given where the method consumes nums as an input and returns the int. So integer is here, the largest sum. So you got the idea, right? We just need to find the largest sum subarray and return the largest sum, okay? Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you are prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you are ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. So approach one, naive brute force approach. So basically brute force is what? Exploring all possible combinations. This is the same guys. So here the method checks all possible subarrays and calculates their sum and then keep track of the maximum sum found. So basically we form all the subarrays of length one, two, three and four. If it is length of four, basically I'm just saying the example here. And then we take the sum of all the subarrays like individually. So we compare them and then we pick the maximum one and return. So that is a basic idea. So the algorithm stands same here. Firstly, we insert the max sum to negative infinity to track the maximum sum. Why negative infinity? So that makes our life very easier while comparing. Okay. So basically when we compare minus one with a negative infinity, then minus one will be the maximum. So in that case, like even if it is a minute positive value or minute greater value, we will be able to detect it. That's why we insert it to negative infinity. So in cases where we, uh, we have to find the minimum sum, then we will insert it to positive infinity. That would help in finding the minimum number. Okay. Next step is to loop through each element to set the starting point of the subarray so why is this required so basically to form the subarrays we require the reference points right so let's say the given array is a b c d so to form the subarrays uh, we have to pick two indices right so for uh, let's say for length one it is very straightforward it's just one index a b c d itself so for length two we should be referencing two indices zero and one so uh, and for length three so we should be referencing from zero to two so for length 4 similarly 0 to 3 that means that like we should have one reference point and then we should keep wearing other reference point so that's why we have this step 2 so here in the step 3 for each starting point loop to the remaining elements to calculate the current sum using this sum so we have the sum method we just utilize because we want to find the sum right that's why we use this so step 4 we just update the maximum sum if the current sum is greater simple guys it's just a plain english test okay so let's look into code for it so this is the first step we discussed we want it to be inserted to negative infinity for comparison so we insert maximum sum with negative infinity 
and then the step two we just loop through each element to set the starting point okay so this is the starting point uh, for our uh, array and then this would be our uh, ending point for the each sub array okay so we loop to the remaining elements this is for uh, you know right uh, we just discussed it uh, i to j range we require so calculate the sum of the sub array using this sum so sum method takes nums from i to j so here uh, we have to be having this j inclusive that's why we kept this plus one else like we know right this slicing is a exclusive operator so step four update max sum if current sum is greater so this obvious step required right? so basically we are getting sum of all the subways and we need to find the maximum one how do we get that by comparison between the max sum and current sum okay so this compares between these two values and gives the greatest value to the max sum okay and then at the end we just hit in the max sum okay so what are complexes here time complex is of n cube due to the nested loops and the sum function so basically here we trade n times and this also we trade n times here also we trade n times in the worst case for the larger sub array that means like sub array of length n so this is n cube and the space complexity here is o of 1 because we don't use any variable that goes with the size of the input and we just use only few variables that remains constant even if the input varies okay that's why it's o of 1 so i got the code ready let me try running this so this is accepted for the smaller test cases so let me try summing this you'll see it's sam looped exceeded see the time limit is exceeded so basically here since it is a o of n cube time complexity it won't scale for this long array so we can perform only 10 power 8 operations per second and this solution would be scaled only if the length of the array is in the range of uh, 10 power 2 even if it is 10 power 3 we can't get this accepted because it is power 3 whole cube it is 10 power 9 and then it won't be accepted right because the acceptable range is only 10 power 8 so that's why we need optimization here so let's look into this how do we optimize this brute force approach approach to optimize brute force so here the time complexity is reduced to n square so what is intuition here this approach optimizes the naive solution by accumulating the current sub array sum rather than using the sum function reducing the time complexity so rather than computing the sum using the sum function we keep the sum accumulating so basically uh, we don't need to compute the sum again and again here that's the key concept algorithm is firstly we initialize max sum to negative infinity to track the maximum sum this is something we already know and then we loop to the each element to set the starting point of the sub array this also we know step three for each starting point loop to the remaining elements to accumulate the current sub array sum so here instead of using the sum function we are accumulating the current sub array sum so basically if we calculate the uh, sum for the sub array of length one we can use it for sub array of length two right so we'll take this example guys so we have this one two three array so we calculate the sum till this extent we can use that for the sub array of one two three right so basically uh, we're just doing this like first iteration we get the sum till this point so current sum is equals to i'm just uh, using cs variable for that current sum is equals to one for the first iteration in the next iteration we calculate the sum till this point that would be one plus two which would be three in the next iteration we calculate the sum using this one three plus we have it three here so that is six so basically we can accumulate the sum rather than compute it again and again that's the idea here okay step four here we update the max sum if current sum is greater this is something we know so let's look into the code guys here the first step is pretty common max sum is equals to float of infinity this is the visualizing and then we just loop to each element to set the starting point as we discussed in the previous approach so this is the same step this we initialize to zero to accumulate the current sub array sum and in step three we loop to the remaining elements so this is same as a previous approach basically uh, we keeping track of this variables i and j to get the sub arrays of length one two three four okay so here at this point we calculating the sum of sub array till i to j using this approach we just discussed so based on the previous sum uh, we just add the current element and then we'll get the sub array sum till i to j okay the step four we have to update the maximum sum if it is greater so basically maximum is equals to max of maximum sum and current sum so at the end we just written the maximum pretty straightforward so what are complexes here time complexes o of n square do the nested nice loops we know this very well and then the space complex is o of 1 because we don't use any extra variable which grows with the input size so that's why it's o of 1 so with previous approach we got 200 out of 210 test cases pass so let's see how many test cases will pass with our newer optimized brute force approach so let me try running this so firstly we need to run to see if there are any syntax errors so this is accepted so that means that there are no errors so let's try submitting this we should see at least one test case improvement here because uh, it's like o of n square it was o of n cube so there should be at least one test case improvement here oh there is exactly one test case improvement so 201 test case pass out of 210 so we further need to optimize it so yeah let's look into that as approach this is the optimized approach this would be for o of n time complexity so this is also called as cadence algorithm 
so what is the intuition here so cadence algorithm keeps track of current subarray sum and then resets it whenever it goes below zero allowing for an optimal linear time solution so basically here the concept is to keep track of the subarray sum uh, like as is and then it resets it when it goes below zero we should say that when subarray sum goes below zero we'll initialize a new sum uh, so it's basically picking a new subarray starting from the next index okay so let's look into algorithm so firstly we initialize the maximum to negative infinity to track the maximum sum this is something we know and then second step we initialize the current sum to zero to track the sum of the current subarray so basically this is similar to previous approach and then third step is to loop to the each element in the array okay so this is a pretty straightforward and then fourth step we add the current element to the current sum so basically here we add in the current element to sum to find the rolling sum okay in step 5 we update the max sum if current sum exceeds it this is something well known to us okay basically we did this in two approaches in step 6 is where the magic happens we reset the current sum to zero if it drops below zero okay this is the crux of the current algorithm this is the main step okay basically the idea here is when we make the sum to zero it means that it is picking a new subarray it is dropping the previous subarray and considering the new subarray starting the next element that's something we discussed already right so let's look into code for this so here step one remains same we initialize the max sum and the step two remains same as a previous approach we just initialize the current sum and the step three we just loop through each element in the array so here firstly we add in the num to the current sum so basically this is the running sum or rolling sum right that's why we want this num to be added to the current sum in step five we update max sum if current sum is greater so basically we want the maximum sum to be uh, having the maximum value right so that's why we update the max sum if it is less than the current sum that we can achieve using this max function we have so in step 6 we just reset the current sum if it goes below zero so at the end we just return the maximum sum basic guys is the same step so observation is this one only if the sum goes less than zero that means that there is no value add even if you add the next element because it won't be giving us the maximum sum okay so what are complexes here time complex is o of n because obviously we are doing only one pass space complexity is o of 1 because we are not using any extra data structures that grow with the size of the input array there is always a constant space so it is a o of 1 so I got the code ready let me try running this so it is accepted for all these small test cases so let me try submitting this so cool guys it is accepted solution for all the test cases and that's a wrap on solving the maximum subarray problem using three different approaches whether you are using the naive brute force method, the optimized brute force or cadence algorithm, this problem is a fantastic way to boost your problem solving skills. If you found this breakdown useful, drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Don't forget to like the video, spread the words to your fellow coders and hit that subscribe button for more in-depth coding tutorials. See you in the next one.